यूसर के स्टूडियो में हम डॉक्टर हरीश पंत साहब का बहुत स्वागत करते हैं आपका बहुत स्वागत है सर वेलकम टू यूसर पंत साहब थॉट लीडर हैं बिजनेस लीडर हैं एकेडमिक लीडर हैं और बिजनेस प्रपोजिशन से लेके पूरी दुनिया भर में काम करते हैं और आपका आप एडवाइज़र हैं तमाम ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस में रहे हैं और सबसे बड़ी बात है कि उनका दिल उत्तराखंड के लिए धड़कता है बिकॉज ही हैपन्स टू बी फ्रॉम दिस वेरी सॉरी हम आपका बहुत स्वागत करते हैं और यूसर्क में सर यूसर्क ये उत्तराखंड साइंस एजुकेशन रिसर्च सेंटर है जो एकेडमिक एक्टिविटीज़ का शिक्षा साइंस अनुसंधान की बॉडी है प्रिंसिपल बॉडी है राज्य की और क्योंकि आप एक थॉट लीडर हैं और आप एक एकेडमिक लीडर हैं बिजनेस से जुड़े हुए हैं स्टार्टअप से जुड़े हुए हैं और उसमें सबसे बड़ी बात इस समय जो दुनिया में इतना बड़ा हम कह रहे हैं जॉब क्राइसिस है तो जो इंडस्ट्री 4.0 है किस तरह से पूरा का पूरा एक परिवर्तन हुआ है जिस तरह से जॉब प्रोफाइल्स बदले हैं उसमें आपका शानदार काम रहा है और दुनिया भर में आपने इंडस्ट्री 4.0 में लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजीज़ में रोबोटिक्स डेटा साइंस ब्लॉक चेन के तो आप विशेषज्ञ हैं आपने उन तमाम चीज़ों पर पूरी दुनिया में आपने लेक्चर्स भी दिए हैं और लोगों ने आपको फॉलो किया है लिंकड से लेके जो आपके सोशल मीडिया पे प्रेजेंस है डिजिटल प्रेजेंस है वो अपने आप में न सिर्फ उत्साह देती है लगता है कि एक थॉट लीडर किस तरह का हो सकता है तो आपका बहुत स्वागत है मैं आपका बहुत स्वागत करता हूँ और इच्छा ये है आपसे जानने की कि उत्तराखंड के लिए वर्तमान परिदृश्य में परिवेश में और इस टेक्नोलॉजी के युग में जिसको हम इंटरनेट टू कह रहे हैं आप क्या संभावनाएँ देखते हैं सबसे पहले आपका बहुत धन्यवाद मुझे यहाँ आमंत्रित करने का ये मेरा सौभाग्य है कि मैं उत्तराचंद से किसी तरह अपने को कनेक्ट कर पाया और मैं सोचता हूँ कि ये आने वाले दिनों में ये मेरा जो योगदान है और जो ये संपर्क है ये और भी गाढ़ा होता रहेगा और इसमें हम वास्तव में कुछ सॉलिड कुछ भविष्य के लिए हम कुछ खास कर पाएंगे जो टेक्नोलॉजी है ये कंटिन्यूस इवॉल्व हो रही है एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस इवोल्यूशन इट 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 गिव्स लॉट ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज बट आल्सो इट क्रिएट्स लॉट ऑफ चैलेंजेस अपॉर्चुनिटीज इन द सेंस दैट फॉर एग्जांपल वी आर सीन विद द एडवेंट ऑफ 4G कमिंग थ्रू आउट इंडिया now people are talking about even 6g coming 5 uh, 5g coming in, in in the world and people have started talking about 6g and even usa is talking about a complete uh, uh, global telecom system wherein uh, it will be only satellite based so with and uh, they have a program of launching 8000 satellites for the whole world so and people are also talking about a day will come when the uh, telecommunication may be free of cost for the whole humanity now we are seeing that the moment uh, the geo has come now we are suddenly seeing that you know uh, voice itself it has multiplied many fold we are seeing that every 6 month the data consumption in india is doubling tripling and india has already become the highest data consumer in the world with this what is happening it has implications in health education Uh, government schemes and programs every facets uh, you know every facets of our personal life professional life it has got impacted and because of this we are seeing that you know uh, enthusiasm you know now suddenly we have started talking about millennials all the ministers are talking about millennials you know so how how this kind of a profound changes we are experiencing because of the technologies so uh, as i said uh, so india india is in the uh, process of leapfrogging because india will india has to skip many uh, intermediate steps and there is an opportunity india to become leader now india is no more a country which just aspired just going in a step here and there and all let us take about uh, say automotive now now we are seeing that whatever is happening latest in the world in terms of uh, uh, mobility it is happening in india so now we are living in a world where india is taking its position 
to be the world leader. Space is an example. India has already become top three countries in the world. So in the economics also we are talking about now China, America and India. So we are already there. We have to recognize that we are no more a developing economy. Let us understand it. Maybe because of our population being 1.35 billion, uh, you know, uh, if, you, if you calculate average wise, it, it may look very small, but we are already top three in the world, not in one, but many parameters. Oh, that's been lovely. Oh, and, uh, you have given this wonderful landscape of Indian economy, potentials, opportunities, and of course challenges. But the um, uh, thing which is important is because last night's um, Prime Minister's uh, speech at Houston, because he talked about data is, you know, it's Gold. oil. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's new oil. Yeah. Uh, what really I want to ask you is with respect to Uttarakhand, because Uttarakhand not only happens to be, uh, I mean, because it was created 19 years back. So it is no more a young state, that kind of, uh, that we at times mention. But at the same time, we, 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 we got to, you know, carve in, we, we just got to provide newer set of opportunities, newer ways of employment and opportunities, and job potentials. So if we connect with technology, if we connect with technology, if we connect with technology, we can get the mobile connectivity. Hai. आपने अपवर्ड मोबिलिटी से लेके तमाम सारी चीजों में क्या है कैसे हम एक इकोसिस्टम जिसकी आप बात करते हैं डिजिटल इकोसिस्टम का इस युग में जहां पर हम आप कह रहे हैं कि बैंडविड्थ हमारे पास लगभग कनेक्टिविटी की कोई कीमत नहीं होगी डेटा की नहीं होगी क्या हम कर सकते हैं कि यहां का यूथ जो करीब-करीब आप समझिए 20 25 लाख के आसपास है वो क्या कमाल नहीं कर सकता कई दुनिया के बड़े-बड़े देश हैं जिनकी आबादी उतनी है जितनी उत्तराखंड की है in terms of economics, Finland, Denmark, Sweden, hmm. 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 Scandinavian countries. What do you think about Uttarakhand? What do you think about your mind? What do you think about Spark? What do you think about Spark? First thing first, you know, uh, nowadays people are talking about, if you if you are thinking about innovation, you have to go to a first principles. Okay? In the same way, if you want to create something great, first of all, you have to come out with the incremental thinking, Patchwork thinking, doing something here and there, disconnected, gone are those days, uh, days Lovely. and Lovely. gone are those eras. First and fundamental is we have to change our thinking. If we think we are a uh, small kid in the town and we behave like anybody is going to bully us, then it is our uh, short-sightedness. We don't have that confidence. And particularly it doesn't sound very encouraging to me people who have Uttarakhand who have been you know praised for their willers and their fights and you know their resilience and many of those qualities and traditions and cultures you know traditions and cultures we are so rich people and suddenly we come to a stage desperateness you know something patchy can we do something small you know this thing we have to shun this we have to shun this we have to get the hundred motivated people who think big, who think big. So this is a fundamental change we have to bring about in our politics, in our political scene, in our thought leadership, in our education, this thing. So all these people have to connect and let us not change the whole world. What I'm saying is that let 10 people, the who have the motivation, the energy, the stamina, who want to do something for the society, right? They are beyond getting into uh, you know, survival, security, or success. They it's want to, integrity. they now want to move to the ultimate step of self-actualization, who want to move to a, uh, you know, significance, doing something significant for the, you know, other people in the world, you know. So, if we have even 10 people, and we say that, now let us get to a clean board, and let's have a whiteboard thinking, okay? So if this state has to become like Denmark, what Denmark has, what we don't have. Yes. Right? So, and many of those countries are no bigger than our whole state. Yes, yes. 
right in terms of geography in terms of population right? in terms of so yeah, okay. so if 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 we if we if we if we say that okay this is a whiteboard in front of us and suppose in 15 years time we benchmark the ultimate the biggest leap humanity has taken right if a country can think of from moving from 2.5 trillion economy to a 5 trillion dollar economy in a span of 5 6 years okay it will be pity if the people of uttarakhand with that willer and that confidence the charm and all these things they think uh, thumb sucking goals right so first and foremost is change your thought process b uh, you know for what will be the your aspirational goal, the best in the world, the best in the India, you know, best of the states. Pitch in there, okay? Now from moving from A to B, what are the key ingredients required? What are the strengths we, we carry, okay? We certainly have strengths, lot many. Maybe we have forgotten. So maybe we have to wake up. Some deep brainstorming has to happen. So what are those strengths? So how we exploit those strengths? What are the key success factors? What are the capabilities required? What are the resources required? What is, what is the talent required? How many, what are thought, uh, you know, thought leaders are required? What are the processes? What are the systems? Now, whenever we talk about these aggregates are already existing in the world. The models have been proven successful, right? So this journey from A to B can be envisaged. Those broad aggregates can be put, uh, access factors can be put in, and then have a time plan, have a leader with passion, the capability to drive it out, and you'll get the results. Now we are living in a society where resources are not constrained. Resources are not a constraint. I, I happen to be a part of VC, you know, uh, VC firms, um, various platforms in South, in North, and across the biggest, uh, you know, incubators. I'm part of it. Everywhere, the now challenge is: Do you have a bright idea? Can you prove that? Uh, can you convince an investor that this idea will be successful economically? socially, uh, you know, uh, environmentally, uh, is it viable? If, the, if, if you can prove that you have billions of dollars, you know, available. So maybe we have to create those kind of platforms. Maybe we have to engage right people. Maybe youth, which is a source of energy for any society, they have to be literally, you know, given the Atma Jagana, Atma Gyan. You know, maybe we have to take them to a, a six months, you know, uh, regenerating their soul, sort of, you know. So with that, then give them challenging, you know, task. Can you think creatively? Can you think innovatively? What are the problems? Can you think of, come out with a better product, better solutions, better services? And can you put in a model? Then you can engage, um, engage the mentors like me, who will help you through this, this process. Then we call the you know people who provide resources. Combine that, you have a success. Oh, that well, has been brilliant. In fact, a stimulating whole uh, set of ideas because he has seen the world, he has travelled across, and knows and uh, ins and outs and intricacies. Uh, and uh, very, very rightly pointed out about, uh, you know, this transforming mindset, basically. Mindset with positivity, because that, that, that's the ultimate uh, key. Uh, Punjab, thing being Uttarakhand um, has all these green forests and we have tremendous green cover. And we, at times we say, yes, we are the water tank because we have Himalayas, Central Himalayas, we have all hmm. these rivers, mighty rivers. So we have ecology on our side. Yes. And uh, with ecology and we, we, we say got to be also integrated along the economy. But this digital part, this technology can do wonders. Yeah. Because once on one hand, this ecology and technology and this digital ecology at times I call it. Yeah. If they do hmm. combine, 
maybe it is something like a miraculous combination because IT, the kind of ecosystem for manufacturing to this and this kind of climate, mm. it is just the right kind of environment. People are honest and uh, mm. especially far-flung areas, they're very, very hardworking. Mm. And um, in terms of giving, imparting education so that not only they could become part of this uh, Internet 2.0 and you are an expert on uh, blockchain or mm. these technologies. Because for certain, five years down the line, this entire scenario is going to be altogether That's different. Right. Yeah. It, it won't be this yeah. kind of word which persists today, which exists today. Mm. So, uh, this, you said, yes, change of mindset, positivity got to be chipped in, yes, it is there. But this academic part, where, I mean, today's date, there is a set pattern of academics. This entire educational institute, this entire paradigm, this is on one single page, I mean, the kind of situation is there. Newer requirements, yeah. newer opportunities, they require newer and desirable newness is there. Right. That kind of. Right. You are a thought leader, you yeah. are an advisor. Simply put in, if you got to just advise some government or some institution, yes, this is the kind of way forward which it yeah. will be. How will you comment on that? See, th that, Especially yeah. academic. Uh, See, uh, again here, what we have to do is that... Uh, we have to engage the different age groups. Many times what happens if only a certain age group, uh, you know, people are given responsibility to design a course, then uh, we are not able to get the complete contextual, uh, you know, understanding. I'll give an example. Uh, I read newspaper through and through, from first page to last page. My son and daughter, they don't read it. And they never have any, uh, any apprehension that uh, they are missing out anything. Even to the extent that they, uh, they consume uh, news when they want, when they feel there is something happening sort of. Otherwise they are very sure that there are a lot of filters. If something is very, really important, it will come out and hit their nose. <laughs> Now, this it, is a very different paradigm. It will reach them rather. Now, this is a very different paradigm. Yes. Now, if we are telling some people to design a course wherein it was a feed-in, feed-in, feed-in kind of a, you know, approach, this is very different to an entrepreneurial way of learning. In the yes. entrepreneurial learning, you first solve a problem. You are given a problem. You conceptualize a problem. Now, the, now even society is evolving to an extent that think of a problem which is not there. Think of a job which is not there. Think of a, think of a scenario which is not yet, you know, anybody has imagined about it. But we never know for certain so, when the scenario is going to right. emerge. So, so that problem, for that what would be a solution? Yeah, yeah. And with that experimentation, once you are able to crack it, then you capture it. Now it's a 180 degree shift. Now in this case, your content becomes on demand. If you want. If you want to forget it, no care about it. Not everybody should be PhD. Can we imagine Bill Gates doing, you know, uh, he was in Harvard, he yeah, was dropped out. Right? And, and he does not have any qualm about it that no, he was not PhD. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yes, yes. So, in the same way, education uh, system has to move from beyond certification, yeah. beyond feeding a, you know, disinterested soul. Right? It, then, the, then, when it becomes on demand, as needed, experimental, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship, not outcome based, impact based. Leaders create impact, not outcome. Wonderful. Outcome is, you know, you put in this input, you have a process, you get an output. But whether it has impacted. If it has not impacted to a society, not impacted public in laws, not impacted your personal life, it has failed its purpose. Right? So, if you want this kind of a society to evolve, then it is very essential that, A, you should have a very diverse group, B, you, you should have representation from all the, 
you know this thing even to the extent people who are coming with a very crazy background like a designer should be you know in the design thinker should be in the part of this a lean thinker should be part of it an artist has to be part of it i was uh, i was uh, talking with someone um, a graduate uh, student and uh, while uh, talking i said imagine a situation that you are sub you are suddenly told you cannot communicate with the text text is gone you don't have that uh, you know clutch to communicate your this thing and imagine you have say 200 cards and you you can speak only with those 200 cards is it possible to communicate then we may say no 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 it, it might be so that uh, the, the the content through text uh, we may not be able to communicate the way the, with the sophistication with the texture we want the feeling which we want and all i disagree now maybe in the past when uh, in egypt in the pyramids when people were scratching something on a stone it might have been very difficult to make thousand characters but now i can create a lakh character symbol symbols right and if those symbols are created digitally, we can imagine that with the pictures and with the symbols, in fact, we, our, uh, our communication will become even deeper. So this is what innovation and the creative thinking and design thinking, art and science, blend of art and science, people with coming with a very diverse kind of a background and this is not a three months, six months kind of a yeah. thing. True. But if you put an effort for three years, five years, consistently and all, the generation which would be going through this process, they will be damn smart. They will outsmart anyone and everyone in the world. If you want to make our country a great country, which we were, if you, if you flip through the history, we have been a great society. So we can again become a great society if we can, you know, go through the, the essential building block of the society. Oh, lovely. Uh, it has been, you talked about this uh, creativity, learning curve, basically, because education is and primarily learning paradigm and how one learns and especially these youths of today, whether it is lifelong learning and mm -hmm. how they can get into it. And very, very aptly because you have pointed out and given a larger, you know, this panoramic view of mm -hmm. that entire uh, situation. And uh, in this, as uh, has been so very forthright, he has been that creativity is important and in today's world collaborative and uh, how it could be more and more effective so that not only organization, individuals, but a society as a whole could uh, grow further, uh, but um, uh, sir, people like you, because you have served outside, uh, I mean, this state, and uh, you have seen all around, and soon you will be going to Bahrain also, and addressing that uh, uh, global gathering on uh, multiple issues, because it is yours, area of specialization is not confined to one yeah. single uh, domain, but rather as a visionary, as a global leader and uh, you talk and you discuss, you design strategies for multiple uh, domains, fields. That's very important. What we uh, want you to, uh, you see, because finally we also got to converge, you know, yeah. and we just got to find out some way out because mentoring is very important. Yeah. And especially uh, for the youth because we are dealing in science, education, research, whatever it is, it mm. may be, but it is holistic. It is all across hmm. many horizontals and across uh, verticals, so many domains. But primarily since this education and job connectivity is very, very essential and requirement and the, the earlier term that you referred was this, there, there is desperation, yes, there is disappointment, yes. But the moment this, this glitter of light, it is there, you know, end of the tunnel, there is this opportunity, something. Hmm. Self-actualization is something that's a very, very different phase hmm. and plain altogether. But this job opportunism and job opportunities hmm. that, that, that opens up many windows. Yeah. So for a person of your uh, uh, 
uh, you know that kind of exposure and that kind of um, experience we want your mentorship in terms of providing this kind of linkage and we will be privileged because out here also mm. you serve against such organization because th this kind of mentorship will be must be required for our youths for our kids mm. for our students for our learners yeah because that way is you can do wonders for mm. us so when short if you could just give us this mentorship curve how as to we, we, we got to move forward because we have developed portals mm. this is right. a small small yeah, initiative yeah, yeah. from our side we have taken yeah. but larger mm. picture and larger you know this this thing which we got to formulate maybe as to how we can and all those people who love this mm. place this uh, lovely state mm. Himalayas and uh, hmm. this uh, Devabhumi as we call hmm. it. Hmm. So a very small uh, this response from you, hmm. which is going to have this hmm. signature statement. Hmm. So which way can we move forward? Right. So before answering uh, your uh, you know exactly you know what you ask about the mentorship, I will just you know go two step back and say that uh, because this is a Devabhumi. In our our uh, you know ancient uh, books and knowledge, uh, everywhere it says that you know the people who take you know uh, creation uh, responsibility in their hand, they succeed. So uh, so that's why this action, this this leading and acting on it, you know, it is our responsibility. Government, uh, of course, has to provide broader, you know, perspective, direction. A lot of organizations supports have to work, uh, have to come, uh, you know, to make it happen and all. Uh, it is true, but at the same time, youth energy is very, very important. Youth has to realize its potential. They have to come out and uh, uh, define their destiny. I'll give you a few examples like organic farming is becoming very important. If organic farming is implemented with a blockchain where there is a traceability from which field it has come and all. Okay? And I can tell you if, if a small flight arrangement is made wherein daily produce can go out of Uttarakhand and export it, you know, which our country is doing. Our country exports tons of flowers every day. There are flights happening from Bangalore every day. So same way organic food, you know, is one of the examples. So th there are many other examples where Uttarakhand youth, they can, uh, you know, with the help of uh, policy, with the help of government, with the help of leadership and all, if they come out and realize their potential and direct their energies where all it can be contributed, we have ample opportunities. And certainly Uttarakhand is very enriched soil and we can do tremendous progress in a very short time going forward. Now coming back to the mentor, mentorship, uh, I have seen in my career that and in, in a company this thing also that uh, do, we, do we have motivation to learn that is very very important. Guru might be ready, but uh, disciple is absent, you know. So in that no, kind of a scenario, happening, yes. yeah, so in that kind of a scenario, uh, nothing much can be done. Sure. Right? So, uh, particularly for Uttarakhand, particularly for Uttarakhand, it is very important that they should not go um, in a despondent uh, kind of a mood. You know, somebody should uh, do something for us and then we will wake up kind of a thing. So maybe some of the basic psychological programs, engaging programs like for sports, like for health, you know, so that they come out from that uh, thinking that their parents will do, some government will do, that kind of a thing. They have to take life in their own hands. And maybe connecting them with the other state youths. Maybe we call uh, some international sports people, some athletes some those programs and all it is just to instigate the curiosity the curiosity the motivation the zeal for life doing something great 
and if we have some um, we have many great people who have come out of this soil and this soil you know chief ministers uh, you know many of the leaders uh, army particularly examples and all so we call them that uh, you enlighten these youths first right once once there is a curiosity once there is a motivation right then and then we invite the mentors and other things and all then this will suddenly you know spurt and uh, one more thing if if there are certain ills in our society like you know drinking or drugs if there are issues we have to recognize that there is a problem there we cannot hide these issues deal them up front confront those youths support those youths support those families kill the problem from the roots so whatever psychological support the process support whatever need to be done there recognize that there is a problem eliminate from this thing then this this uh, then this mentorship process and all they will start you know uh, gaining ground unless until these basic things are addressed uh, this will go to a certain extent but again fizzle out so there are preconditions pre qualifiers when this mentorship platform works so if there are a b c d e qualifiers let us not short circuit it short no, circuit is not going the short circuit will not help this is my message and i am ever available uh, you know 24 into 7 kind of a thing okay if i miss a call then uh, i will call back whenever i am free i keep on posting in social media right i keep on writing so uh, i am more so available for uttarakhand you know and i invite all the uttarakhand youth the professionals the thought leaders and all uh, get connected uh, with me in uh, all the social media as possible and invite them enrich me with their experiences with their diverse thinking and all right so that i learn and uh, in the same process i will like to share my thoughts my ideas and uh, you know whatever little bit i can do for the street i will be very happy to contribute uh, thank you so much uh, pan sahab and uh... it has been so very nice fantastic splendid talking to you and as i said yes i can yes you can yes we can and uh, where the masses uh, has been given by him and it's very important and uh, uh, he will and with his as i said with his kind of exposure and experience there he is and uh, will be accessible to our uh, students and especially all those knowledge seekers so there he is aapka bahut bahut dhanyawad aap aaye aur ye rishta hamare studio aur hamare learners ke sath aapka juda hai and i am pretty hopeful that this thing will continue yeah, it's my pleasure and uh, because i have lived in so many states and particularly i have lived in south for 13 14 years continuously so suddenly i have switched from complete hindi medium to english medium then so it has been i would love to again talk in hindi but i think it will take a bit while for me to become as uh, you know uh, uh, fluent uh, as in english so uh, with the time it will happen and uh, i i i again request all the uttarakhand youth and uh, thought leaders policy makers and all to get connected and uh, from there we we join our hands together to make uttarakhand great bahut bahut dhanyawad